All right, perfect. Let's see how we cleaned up. Oh, this is excellent. Look at this. All nice and neat. Woo, nice. We had a storm last night, so it was a big deal. In fact, Salty got a little upset, I think. Let's, let's, wait. let's, see. let's see how he's doing a little later. But remember, the storm is a good thing it reminds you on how small you are and how big God is. And when you remember that, it's called humility. And so we have a verse. Let's see. Oh, too far. Too far back. Keep going. There we go. Yes. Here we go. I'll read this for you, and then I want you to read it too. Psalm 30.10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. All right, let's say it together. And remember, the ocean. You gotta be louder than the ocean. Ready? Psalm 30, 10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Yeah, well, they've got it all together. But what, who do you think this person that wrote this, who are they talking to? God, Jesus, the Lord, hear, O Lord, and they're asking him something. This is a prayer. Have mercy upon me. He can't do it. He needs God. Lord, be thou my helper. So that's a great prayer. It's a great verse. Let's see if Salty can be helped, if we can help Salty with this. Let's call Salty. Can you help me call Salty? Yeah, Salty! Oh boy. <laughs> Salty, what's the matter? Come up. Come, oh, yeah, come talk to us. What's up? I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. I acted very badly yesterday. Yeah, I know. You were very upset. I'm so ashamed. I'm so sorry. None of you will ever want to talk to me ever again. No, we'll forgive you. You do? You forgive me? Absolutely. Really? Really. We're glad to give you a second chance. You said you were sorry. I'm sure you'll act much better today. I will. I promise. Yeah. Then would you like to hear the verse that the sailors just learned? I'd love to hear it. All right. Let's say it for Salty. You ready? Psalm 30, 10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. How about that? They did a great job, didn't they? They did. Can you say the verse for us? I can try. Yeah, try it. Let me see. It goes like this. Psalm 30, 10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Great job, Salty. It's such a wonderful verse. Because it reminds us if we ask God to have mercy on us, he will. He will be our helper when we need help the most. I needed God to have mercy on me. That's a great verse to memorize. Yep, it sure is. I have to go back to the crow's nest now, but it sure feels good to know that you were all willing to give me a second chance. No problem. We'll be sure that you do the same for us and give us a second chance. Right? We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, sure will. I wouldn't miss coming to see all of you. Bye. Bye, Salty. Bye, all right. Now, look at this. I get to talk to you some more. I take my hat off. I want to tell you, look at that. I have a real head. Oh. Woo. It's a little, little sea blown. Now, I'm going to move this over here. Look at this. So I wanted, we've been talking about Jonah and a lot of things about him. We'll get to him in a second. But I wanted to ask you, do you know what a do-over is? Who can tell me what a do-over? Yeah? You know? Anna? Somebody gets you a second chance? Yeah, like when you're playing a game, if you're... You're at a soccer game and you're playing and you go and you go to kick the ball and you miss. And then you say, oh, I wish I could do that again. And they say, oh, do it over. And you get to kick it again. That's another chance. Or if you're doing a board game and you're rolling the dice and your piece lands on the 
square that takes you back to home. And they're like, oh, I wish I could do that again. And they say, go ahead. You roll it again and get another chance. The question is, do you ever deserve a do-over when you're playing a game? No, you don't, because the rules of the game are there to have fun and make it fair. And if everyone had a do-over, then there wouldn't be any rules. No, so when someone, when your friend says, it's okay to have a do-over, you know what that is, what they're doing? They're giving you mercy, right? You get a second chance. So we're gonna talk about how Jonah got a do-over from God. So can you tell me kind of what has happened with Jonah so far? What have we learned? What happened to Jonah? Remember? Yeah. He got swallowed by a big fish. That's true. Uh huh. He disobeyed. Yep. Mercedes. They did, they did. AJ? Oh, she took it. Well, it's good. Yeah, so God told, we start at the beginning, right? God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. That was just the order. Go to Nineveh and tell them about their wickedness. And Jonah thought that they should be destroyed. So he went the other way. He didn't want to do what God said. He took a ship and went in the opposite direction. And like you said, he was disobedient. He didn't do what God wanted. And so God sent the storm on the ship. The sailors were terrified. They didn't know what was going on. They found it was Jonah's fault. They threw him overboard. We learned about that. We learned about the, the fish. And so we're going to pick up right at that spot. And so the Bible says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. So this wasn't an ordinary fish. This was a fish so big that it could swallow a man whole. I know what it so, is. look at me. You know how big? I know what it's it is. It's a whale. You know what it is? It's a whale. A whale. Well, a whale of a fish, a gigantic fish. That's right. Can you see? This is how big. I mean, at least the mouth had to open up. And it was, the Bible says, the Lord prepared this fish. So, God had a plan. This wasn't just a fish that came out of nowhere. So what do you think it was like to be inside of a fish? What do you think it would be like? Scary, absolutely. Smelly? Yeah. Ooh. What do you think, Mercedes? Yucky? Disgusting, absolutely. Yeah, it'd be all of those things. It would be. It's not like you could just open the door and leave when you wanted to, right? It's all, there's not even a window to look out. Could look out his eye. It's not a window. And he's probably getting all tossed around inside because he can't, he doesn't know what's going on. So what do, you, what do you think Jonah was thinking when he was in the fish? If you're in this smelly, dark, yucky place, what would you be thinking? You know? Yeah, the fish got you. I mean, that would be. That's all you would think you were going to die. There is no reason for Jonah to think anything else was going to happen to him other than I'm in a fish. I'm going to die. He probably thought this was his punishment. This is like, well, I deserve this one. He probably would have been scared to death. So, have you ever been scared? So scared? You know what you can do when you're scared? Or maybe what you have done? Pray. Absolutely. Pray to God. God is always listening. And it's good to pray to God. You can trust him. And so Jonah knew he sinned and disobeyed God on purpose. There is no doubt about that. He went the opposite direction. And what do you do when you realize you've sinned? When you're praying? Mm -hmm. You feel guilty? That's right. Your hand. Hannah? You ask God for forgiveness. Yeah, you confess your sin. You don't hold it in and you don't run away. It doesn't matter where you are. You can always confess your sin to God. So Jonah prayed right there in the belly. He didn't have anywhere else to go. Desperate. And he did two things. It said he confessed his sin and he praised God. This kind of seems odd. 
The Bible says he confessed. He says, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. So that's, that's the confession. He, pray, he praised God. Why would it be important to praise God when you're praying? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. He made the world. That's right. He is God. He made everything. He deserves to be praised. So there are some ways that you can praise God. You can say a prayer. You can sing a hymn. You can tell others of something God did in your life. Like those are all good things. Jonah praised God. He said, but I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So that is a great praise. You are praying to God who created everything. He's merciful when we turn to him. So God hears Jonah's prayer, and he doesn't die in the fish, but we know that because we read how it all turns out. Did God rescue Jonah immediately when he prayed? Yes, no, I hear yes and a no. Yes, no, he did and he didn't, yes. Yes, he did. He didn't pray immediately when he prayed. It says, the Bible says, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. That's a long time. That's almost the same amount of time since we started VBS. Can you imagine, if you think back, all the days and nights and all the stuff you've done, if you were just in a dark, smelly, yucky place all that time? That would really sink in. It's like a time out. Jonah had a time out. So do you think that Jonah knew how long he was going to be in the fish? No, he didn't. He didn't know. He was probably praying the whole time. But, but he was in the fish for three days. So it says, the Bible says, and the Lord spake unto the fish and vomited out Jonah upon dry land. Now that sounds yucky. But, but Jonah was probably really glad to see land and the sun and know that he was alive again. So God gave Jonah a do-over. So he's alive. He's not dead. He could have been dead. So he de- deserved the punishment and he, for disobeying God, but God showed mercy on him. So here's the question. Have, you, you, have your parents ever asked you to do something and you didn't? Like, pick up your toys and you just didn't do it? That ever happened? I don't think I did that. I know, sometimes you didn't. Sometimes your parents give a correction for disobeying, but then what did you have to do anyway? You had to pick up the toys. So God told Jonah, we're going to do it again. Wouldn't it have been better if Jonah had obeyed God the first time? Can you, think of a, can you think of a song that we've been singing? One of the songs in this thing? Yep. One of the, so- one of the lines in the song says, it doesn't pay to disobey. Right? And the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah a second time, saying, arise, go into Nineveh. So that's his, that's the do-over, and, and Jonah, his do-over, it says, he arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. So he obeys. That's awesome. He should have done it the first time, but he did it the second time, and that's good. So Nineveh, he arrives at Nineveh finally, and Nineveh is a big city. It's really big. The Bible says Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. So a lot of people talk about how three days, like the around, like the circumference of it, to go around it. So you have to ask, if it's three days' journey around, how long is a day's journey? Well, a lot of people say that it's about 20 miles or so walking. So if you know Richmond, if you, does anyone know where Short Pump is? you know where the airport is? If you were to walk from Short Pump to the airport, that's about 20 miles. That's a day's journey. 
So that's the size of Nineveh was almost the size of Richmond. You think about how, how big that is, how many people would be in that. And the Bible says, and Jonah began to enter in the city a day's journey. So he walked that whole distance, at least, and he gave the message. So imagine this, Jonah, just fresh out of the belly of a whale, more or less, yucky, walking all day, and he's yelling, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Yet 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. You think people paid attention? You got a smelly guy walking through saying what God is going to do. It wasn't a very long sermon, but God's truth is very simple. It's up to us to decide, are we going to obey or not? So what if someone told you that your city or where you live is going to be destroyed in a month or so? What would you do? You've got two choices. You could run away from God, or you could repent, because that's pretty serious. You know what the people of Nineveh did? The Bible says, so the people of Nineveh believed God. Amen. That's right. Praise God. That is what we should always do. Why? Because God made everything. He's in control, and what he says is true. When it comes down to what God says and what you want to do, God comes first. The Bible says they didn't just believe. It says that they went a step further and proclaimed a fast, put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. So they weren't just sorry. They showed it. Do you know what a fast is? Fast? No. Do you know what? Yeah, you, you don't eat. You, you withhold something that's important to you in order to focus on God. Yeah, they didn't eat. And sackcloth? you know what sackcloth is? The thing they make sacks out of. Yeah, that's not a fancy kind of clothes. If you came to church in sackcloth, we would, we would talk to you. How is it going? <laughs> yeah, that's a mourning. They would put that on for, for sadness. And you would see someone in sackcloth. You'd say, wow, they're sad. Something, something is up. So even the king heard about this. The Bible says, for the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne. He laid his robe from him, so he took his fancy clothes off, covered himself with sackcloth, and then he sat in ashes. Think of the leftover from fire. That is humbling. Can you imagine if a president did that and told his country to do the same in order to honor God? I mean, that's incredible. And it didn't stop there. The Bible says the king told all his people, and he's very specific. He says, let them turn everyone from his evil way. And from their violence that is in their hands, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? So the king knew that he, they fully deserved to be punished for their sins. He knew it. The people knew it. He did the right thing and humbled himself before God. But there was no guarantee that God would honor it. He wasn't doing it to, to pay for it. He did it because it was right. And so, what did God do? Did he say, eh, zot? No. The Bible says, and God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Amen. That's a praise to God. What mercy. I mean, that, there is no reason for God to spare them, except that is who God is, merciful. So we've seen that God is a God of second chances, the do-over. He gave Jonah a second chance. He gave Nineveh a second chance. And here's the important part for you tonight. God is willing to give you a second chance if you show true repentance, right? knowing you've done wrong before God, knowing that God is justified to punish your sin, and you ask forgiveness that's turning from your ways and turn to him. And I'd like to turn it to Pastor to close us out. Yeah. Hey, very
Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Darrell and Mrs. The lady who does the songs, they're married. Did you know that? <laughs> so he read a verse. Did you catch this verse? It's right almost at the very end. I don't think it's the very end of chapter 2, but uh, the Bible says salvation is of the Lord. Uh, salvation is a really big word. Sometimes we use the word saved. Same thing. Rescued or delivered. And that's what happened to Jonah. If God didn't get him out of the fish, he would have died. But God is a God of mercy, and so he rescued him. He saved him. That's why Jonah said salvation is of the Lord. And you know what we're going to do tonight, boys and girls? <clears throat> Give you the opportunity, if you would like to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, we give you the opportunity to do that tonight. I want to offer that to you, that folks could meet with you and take you to a private place and show you from the Bible how you can trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes, and I'll tell you four things. And then, if you would like to trust Jesus as your Savior, I'll have you um, raise your hand, and then we'll let you go to a private place with someone. Okay, so here's what you need to know. Listen very carefully. God's son is named Jesus, and he died and rose in order to pay for your sins. That's why God is able to be merciful. Merciful to us because he judged the sin that we did on Jesus. So God's son, Jesus, died and rose to pay for sin. Now, God is merciful, but in order to enjoy God's mercy, we must admit our sin and trust Jesus. So we'd like to offer you the opportunity uh, to trust Jesus as your personal Savior. Perhaps you've already done that. If you have, you don't need to do it again. But you can still pray and ask God for his mercy and forgiveness. But I wonder who might be here tonight that would say, I've never done that. I know that I've sinned and I want to admit my sins, but I want to trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. If that's you, if you'd like to do that tonight, would you slip your hand up and let me see it? Just raise your hand above your head. Okay, you can put your hand back down. Who else? I see that hand too, thank you. You can put that hand down. Uh, you'd say, I would like to trust Jesus. Keep your eyes closed, please. We'll let everybody have privacy. I'd like to trust Jesus as my Savior. If that's you, put your hand up. Thank you. I saw your hand. You can put your hand back down. Okay. Just be quiet for just a moment. You pray and you think about it, and we'll come back tomorrow night. And if you would like to trust Jesus as your Savior, don't wait till tomorrow night. Talk to your teacher when you go to your classroom. Okay? All right, let's pray. Father, we're so grateful tonight that salvation is of the Lord because it was of, if it was of us, we'd never do it perfectly. But you never fail. We thank you for that. Use your word in the hearts of these children for Jesus' sake we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may look up, and normally now we uh, sing songs and do verses, but Mrs. Janice has something very special, right? Okay, good. Just making sure she wanted to do that. I wonder if you remember this picture. Okay, so here's my question. Who is that? Uh, that's, no, no, not Jonah. That's a good guess. Missionary. Not Jonah. You remember his name? Starts with Hudson. Hudson Taylor. There you go, Hudson Taylor. <laughs> okay, now, here's the thing. When Hudson Taylor went to China, this is one way he got he got he
he got uh, pushed around, not in a car. And I asked my wife, Mrs. Janice, if she would share a really fun story about her daddy. There you go. Okay, thank you. So my dad, many years ago, when I was only 16 years old, our family moved to Malaysia, which is a country somewhere in the area of China. And my dad went over early on a cargo ship with all of our uh, belongings. And they went to a port in some town. It was some Asian town. And when my dad got there, there were these people there that said, here, come and give a ride. I give you a ride, $2. And my dad said, I don't have $2. I have $1. Oh, $1, fine. So my dad rode in something like this, except instead of being pushed, the man was pulling my dad and pulling him all around. And the man would say, there's the government building. There's this building. There's that. And my dad really enjoyed the ride. Now, my dad was a Christian man. He loved the Lord Jesus. But when the ride was done, the man said to him, two dollars. My dad said, I told you I don't have two dollars. I only have one. But you're a big man. I need two dollars. So you know what my dad said? He had no more money. He said, I'll tell you what. You get in the cart, and I'll pull you around. And so the man got in the cart, and my dad pulled him around. And he said, there's the government building. There's this building. And all of the other people around were laughing at the man. And he said, get off. It's OK. <laughs> I thought you might like that story. I wish you knew her dad, Jim Johnson, was a wonderful guy. Okay, uh, so it's time for songs and verses, I think. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay, who can remember the verse from the first night and say it without looking before he puts the verse up there? <gasps> okay, do you want to try? You forgot. Okay, who can remember it from the first night? Uh, Maddie. Very good. Okay, who can remember the verse from the second night without looking? Oh, it's the same people every time. It's got to be somebody new. <gasps> Caleb. That was awesome. Really good. Really, really good. And good job for you guys knowing it, too. I don't mean that you shouldn't raise your hands. That was really good. And then what about the third night? That is tonight. Who knows it? Oh, AJ. Okay, and that's Psalm 3010. Let's say them all together. So here they come. Let's do the first one. Here it is. Ready? We're going to say the reference first. Psalm 89, 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Can we take it off and try it once? Ready? Psalm 89, 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Okay, now let's do the second one. Here it is. Psalm 1038, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. All right, let's try it. Ready? Psalm 1038, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Very good. Okay, let's try the third one. I might have to peek. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, let's do it like this first. Psalm 30, 10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Ready? Psalm 30, 10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Let's do it again, because I had to look. Did anybody else have to look? Like, did you not know it? One more time. One more time. Ready? Psalm 30, 10. 
Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Well, I've got to keep working on that one, but you guys did good. You did really good. Okay, let's sing. Let's do D. No, my D. That's first. Hey, could I say something? Oh, sorry, sorry. yes. Just so you know, on Friday, uh, when the parents are here, we're going to have you come up and stand up here. And you'll get to sing the song and these verses. Okay, so that's why we've got to practice them, okay? And we'll have it up on the screen. So you'll be able to kind of look up there and be able to see it. But anyway, so, so practice it so you can do it on Friday. Get it memorized. Oh, we'll sing to the grown ups. Oh, um, do you know my Jesus? Yes. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay. Yeah. One more song. And it's the one that we clap. Remember the one we clap? Okay. You think you know where to clap tonight? It's hard, isn't it? And you, some people are new tonight, so I know they don't know. But I can clap. You're not new tonight. Okay, um, I think tonight we should do Miss Becky and Miss Diana's class first because they haven't gone first yet to go to their classrooms. So that would be where Maddie starts the aisle right there. So you guys can start and go to your classroom first. <laughs> 